Nikki Young here. Welcome to my second episode of Serial Nightmare, brought to you by my true crime podcast, Serial Napper. Serial Nightmare is a special series of episode that I'm doing just for the month of October in celebration of everything spooky, which I love. Personally, when I think about things that creep me out the most, my mind always wanders to insane asylums. I'm not talking about the ones that we have today. I'm talking about the facilities from many years past, before we understood mental health and had appropriate treatments, when the mentally ill were seen as less than human and used as test rats where they had to endure barbaric, painful, torturous treatments. The pain and suffering in these facilities were unimaginable. And so whatever energy still lies within the walls of these facilities has to be dark, which is why tonight we're talking about Penhurst, an institution for mentally and physically disabled individuals, which closed their doors after word began to spread about the horrors that were happening behind the scenes. Before we jump into it, tonight we have a sponsor that I think everyone can appreciate. I know sometimes my parents listen to my podcast, so here's your heads up, mom and dad. It might be time to skip ahead by 30 seconds or so. AfterDarkGifts.com has everything you need to keep busy during the lockdown, if you know what I mean. You may have guessed it, but yes, they are your one-stop shop for the most creative adult toys I've ever seen. At first I was like, whoa, have I been out of the game too long? But then I was like, hey, (laughs) these look like they really get the job done. Whether you're in a relationship and looking for a little something to spice up your life in the bedroom, or you're still single and over having to stay within your little bubble during lockdown, they have toys for couples and for you to use by yourself. From the simple sex enhancer to really high-tech gadgets you probably didn't even know existed. I'm not joking. Visit AfterDarkGifts.com and use code SerialNapper, all one word, at checkout for 10% off your order. They also offer free shipping on orders over $100, so go big or go home. But really, we're talking about adult fun here, so go big. That's AfterDarkGifts.com and use code SerialNapper, all one word, at checkout for 10% off your order. Stay tuned halfway through tonight's episode. I'll be talking about some of my favorite finds on the website. Okay, let's jump right in. If you're a fan of American Horror Story, the asylum season was kind of based off of Penhurst. The Penhurst State School and Asylum, built in 1903, was originally called the Eastern Pennsylvania Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. Feeble-minded, yeah, what a lovely way to put it, but this was a common term used to describe anyone who was unable to function in normal society due to psychological issues or even those with physical disabilities, like being deaf or blind. It covered a wide range of people, where today we have services and help we can provide them, Then, society just didn't want to deal with them, so they were sent by their families to institutions like this one. That in itself is incredibly heartbreaking. Imagine being sent away by your family just because they didn't want to help you or take care of you. From 1903 to 1908, the first buildings were constructed on 637 acres, which is a massive property in Spring City, Pennsylvania. I'll post an image of the map so you can get a better idea of the layout, but the first few buildings constructed included a dining room for the girls and a dining room for the boys, a kitchen and a storeroom, laundry and sewing room, sleeping quarters, one for the boys and one for the girls, and a teacher's lounge. In 1921, Penn Hall was constructed, which was for employees' housing. In 1929, the assembly building was complete and functioned as the gymnasium and auditorium. Other buildings and facilities were added over time. It was just an absolutely huge campus and facility. And there was actually an underground tunnel that connected all of the buildings, which allowed things to be moved quietly and privately. On November 23rd, 1908, patient number one was admitted to the hospital. 
When admitted, patients were classified physically as either imbecile or insane, classified mentally as healthy or epileptic, and classified dentally as having teeth either good, poor, or treated. All of these factors would determine which ward they would be put in. Just four years after opening, Penhurst was already overflowing with people. Of course, it was originally meant to be an institution for the disabled and mentally ill. However, it wasn't long before orphans, immigrants, and even criminals were thrown into this place as well. It would have been a fear of those who lived in Pennsylvania that if they were odd, different, or deemed to be someone undesirable, they would be sent to Penhurst. The bustling facility was basically a self-contained city that just kept growing and growing. It even operated its own power plant, it policed its own grounds, and it produced its own food. Any additional needs were supplied by a railway line that connected the campus to the outside world. They could operate without interacting with anyone in the outside, and they seemed to prefer it that way. By the 1960s, Penhurst was home to about 2,791 people, which was almost a thousand more than their maximum capacity. And horrific stories of abuse and neglect began to trickle out. TV reporter Bill Baldini decided to investigate the institution to determine whether or not the rumors around town were true. During a five-episode expose of Penhurst, he shocked the nation, reporting on the atrocities that he had himself witnessed. Naked, ill, skeletal-looking patients and children from six months to five years of age were tied to beds, locked in cribs. In one room, there were as many as 80 cribs filled with babies and children who couldn't walk with only two people assigned to the room to take care of them, to feed them, to change them. Some of them looked like they were near death. Other inmates of the institution were shown rocking, pacing, twitching, which could be seen as common with those who were severely disabled, either mentally or physically, but others were actually lucid and coherent. However, you could tell that the Penhurst environment had put them in this solemn, withdrawn state. People who could talk when they were first admitted to Penhurst just stopped talking. When one patient was asked by the interviewer what he would like most in the world if he could have anything he wanted, the sad and withdrawn patient replied to get out of Penhurst. As promised, I'm going to talk to you about some of the fun adult toy items I found on AfterDarkGifts.com. So again, mom, dad, you listening, skip ahead about 30 seconds. If you're new to adult toys, well, first of all, girl, allow me to blow your mind. You need the tried, true, and tested Wonder Wand, which you can find in the nightstand of one out of every two women. Okay, I made that statistic up, but the Wonder Wand is a classic for both solo and partner fun. It's not intimidating, and you can pretend it's a massager for your poor back and neck. Nobody has to know. If you're more vanilla than a wafer cracker, then why not shop for some new lingerie? They have a ton of great options from sexy and sensual to kinky and everything in between. Speaking about kinky, holy Toledo, I learned a lot of new information today regarding the wide range of sex toys one can have. AfterDarkGifts.com has a massive selection of products on the kinkier side, including tons of BDSM stuff. If you're looking to really spice up your life, they've got you covered. Visit AfterDarkGifts.com and use code SERIALNAPPER, all one word, at checkout for 10% off your order. They also offer free shipping on orders over $100, so go nuts. What else do you have to do right now anyway? Okay, back to tonight's story. Bill Baldini would actually later say this regarding the filming. 
We start shooting and my crew was mortified. I mean, I had trouble keeping them on the job because they were literally getting sick from what they saw. Think of a ward of infants and children from the ages of six months to five years old. There are 80 of them in metal cages. They had to attend to them every day, all day. These people were literally dying in their own feces for days. The asylum staff would often tie patients to their beds and leave them alone for hours, if not the whole day. Because of the overcrowding and lack of staff to care for everyone appropriately, this just seemed like an easier option, but it would also mean that many of them would be covered by their own feces by the time orderlies returned. At the time that this documentary had aired, the largest zoos actually spent $7.15 each day on each animal, whereas Penhurst only spent $5.90 per resident per day at the time. That means that they were getting fed less and taking care of less than animals in a zoo. Patients who showed aggressiveness were often drugged to calm them down. If they by chance bit another patient or a staff member, they would often remove all of their teeth so that they couldn't do it again. On another part of the expose, it showed one of the hospital's physicians describing how he dealt with a patient who was caught being a bully to another patient. The doctor went on to describe how he had asked one of his colleagues which injection he could use to cause the most discomfort to the patient without permanently injuring him. Then he proceeded to administer that injection to the patient just to cause him pain without permanently injuring him or really without getting caught and having to face any consequences. One resident who had intellectual disabilities, who was also blind, was strapped to a wheelchair even though she could walk. Staff claimed to do this so that they would always know where she was. When all of this came out, people were outraged, as they should be, and the wheels began to set in motion. A lot of people protested the treatment at Penhurst, and they wanted this institution shut down immediately. In 1983, nine employees were indicted on various physical abuse and assault charges. However, it wasn't until 1987 when overcrowding and inadequate staffing finally caught up to the hospital, causing them to close their doors for good. Over 10,500 people have passed through Penhurst in the nearly 80 years of operation. It's not known exactly how many perish there, but I have heard estimates of as high as half. We know that many did die there due to neglect at the hands of other patients and even at the hands of their caregivers. Today, the asylum is one of the biggest hotbeds for paranormal activity, which we're going to talk about right now. Some of the buildings have started to crumble and fall down. Visitors have claimed to hear voices, shrieks, and murmurs of pain from former residents and inmates of the facility. One piece of artwork or graffiti on the wall reads, Welcome to Hell, and this place was truly a hellhole. It's basically a rite of passage for the local high school students to break into Penhurst, leaving behind broken windows, murals, and tags on the walls. There are still pieces of the old Penhurst Asylum in the halls and in the rooms, including clothing, rotting books, splintered chairs, rusted wheelchairs, dilapidated toiletries, even a dentist chair where they would remove the unruly patient's teeth. You guys are probably familiar with the show Ghost Adventures. I used to have a major obsession with their show, but they did an episode on the Penhurst Asylum way back in the day. I highly recommend taking a look because they caught a lot of insane paranormal activity. They also interview a young woman named Sarah who visited the asylum long after it shut down as part of a paranormal hunt. And she caught audio that I'm going to play for you in a minute. They were recording video footage as they were walking through the halls of the Whitman building, which was in the infirmary. When they reviewed the tape, they discovered audio of someone vomiting pretty violently. 
I'm going to play it now and you can let me know what you think. Did you hear it? It's so creepy. One of the buildings that is said to have the most paranormal activity is the Mayflower Building, which consists of three stories and a basement. In the basement, there was a recreational area for patients and a boiler room. The first and second floors include dorms and a nurse's station. Rusted, stained mattresses and frames can be found strewn about. One former tour guide of the abandoned Penhurst, Melissa June Daniels, claimed that one of her large male guests was deeply disturbed by his experience on the third floor of the Mayflower building. He claimed he felt pressure on his neck and he saw a ghost lunging at him in an attempt to strangle him. He was so terrified that he held her hand in order to pass the room to exit the building. Now in the basement, near the boiler room, there's another very popular spirit nicknamed the King. He was a maintenance worker when the hospital was operational in the 40s or 50s, but apparently he didn't treat the patients very well. And even in death, he's not such a nice spirit. He can often be heard on EVPs laughing maniacally or seen by visitors as a shadow figure. Those who visit the boiler room in the basement have also said that they can smell cigar smoke, which he was known to smoke when alive. Now, in the Quaker building, numerous shadows manifest and dissipate at will. These shadows include what appear to be a small female child with long black hair, hunched over with dangling arms. One visitor to the abandoned hospital reports an incident that happened to her. She was holding a candle when suddenly the candlelight went out. They heard a little girl laughing. Could it be the same little girl with the long black hair? You see, the Quaker building was home to some of the most difficult patients to deal with, those who were deeply disabled or disturbed. So it's no wonder the Quaker building would contain some of the most vocal spirits. These are just a few of the more popular ghosts that have made their presence known. However, there are so many more that can be discovered with a quick Google. So I encourage you to check it out after this if you're brave enough. In 2008, a businessman purchased Penhurst, and in 2010, he opened up the school and hospital as a Halloween attraction, naming it Penhurst Asylum. People flock to Penhurst each year for the attraction, which brings $1 million in profits each year. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this attraction. On one hand, the building was decrepit and falling apart. It was home to a lot of homeless people and a spot where teenagers and the likes would break in, spray paint, and trash it. Now it has been somewhat restored as a usable building. The Penhurst Memorial and Preservation Alliance don't see this as a positive. They claim the attraction portrays people with disabilities in a demeaning and degrading fashion, demonizing people with disabilities as a profit-making entertainment is offensive to everyone. Personally, I think it makes it really difficult for the dead to finally rest. When it's been made into an attraction, it would probably rustle up energy and maybe evoke spirits who just want some peace and quiet finally. And it's a place of extreme pain and sadness. So I believe any spirits who might still be lingering around here, they aren't likely to be happy spirits. But... On the flip side, would I visit? I mean, hell yeah, I would because admittedly, I have a morbid curiosity. So what do you think? Would you go? Do you think that this attraction should be shut down? I'd love to know your thoughts on it, but that's it for tonight's Serial Nightmare Story. Thank you to After Dark Gifts for sponsoring tonight. Make sure you visit AfterDarkGifts.com and use code SerialNapper, all one word, at checkout for 10% off your order. They legit have anything your imagination desires. As for me, 
If you want to reach out, you can always find me on Facebook at Serial Napper. Check me out on Twitter at Serial underscore Napper, or I'm on YouTube, Nikki Young, Serial Napper, all one word. Until next time, sleep tight and don't look under the bed. Bye.